place and the purpose of the church. Why do we have the church? Have you ever wondered why we have the church in this world? Why wouldn't God just let us have the Holy Spirit only? Is in the Holy Spirit uh, is is in the Holy Spirit powerful enough to shepherd and pastor all of us? Isn't He that powerful enough? I end up with Mumini, every believer, every Christian, touch them with a powerful hand. You know the hand of God is powerful. When God touches you, you cannot recover. Is that not so? Ecclesiastes 3, 14. Whatsoever the Lord doeth, for I know that whatever the Lord doeth is good, isn't it? So if what God does in your life doesn't need any addition, or any subtraction. You know, when God creates something, it is good and it is perfect. Genesis 131. When God creates something, it is good and it is perfect. When God saw everything that he had created, he said, Behold, it is good. Did he say it is good or it is very good? He looked at everything he created and said, this is very good, including you. When God looks at you, he says, you are very good. When God gives you a family, he says, he looks at it and he says, this family is very good. When God gives you a job, he looks at you working and he says, oh, this job is very good for my son or my daughter. And, and God wants to give you good things. God wants to give you good things. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? God wants to give you good things. Psalms 84 verse 11 says that God will not withhold any good thing. He will not withhold any good thing from you. So God wants to give you good things. Shout amen. Shout hallelujah. Shout thank you Jesus. For the good things you've given to me. And you are about to give to me. Hallelujah. Are you excited? So how comes the God who does good and perfect things when he saves us when he comes into our lives he requires the services of human beings to sustain what he has done to sustain to maintain his work in our lives why does he need the services of an entity that is run by humanity that's the question. There is a reason. There is a reason. And, and part of the reason, let me explain this to you. Part of the reason, it is because man was created with the ability to decide what he wants for himself. God can touch you and touch you forever. God can save you and save you forever. God can heal you and heal you forever. God can bring you to his kingdom and keep you there forever. And he continues to do that. He continues to do it but not in the way that we would maybe uh, think He still needs an entity called church for the purpose I'm going to show you this morning. And the reason is because man 
is a being that is autonomous, independent, autonomous, not entirely free to do whatever he wants. At the end of the day, we will see there will be accountability. But man has the ability to decide what he wants for his life. He is able to make decisions for himself. Heaven is created for man. But not every man will go to heaven. Because man is given the ability to decide whether he wants to go to heaven or not. Hell is not created for man. Hell was created for Satan, Lucifer, for the devil, together with his angels, fallen angels. That's why hell was created. But there are men, there are people that will choose to go to hell. As a matter of fact, there are people right now in this world that have chosen. They do not want to go to heaven. They would rather go to hell. So man has the ability to decide. But a neighbor for me inform them that you have the ability to choose. Tell your neighbor it is your decision that brought you here. Whether you are going to follow God or not, it is your decision. It is your decision. Joshua said, that you can choose whoever you want to follow. Whoever you want to serve. But as for me, I have chosen to follow, G uh, uh, to follow God. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. That was a choice of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter uh, 20, 20. Is it Joshua or Deuteronomy? Joshua 24. Verse, verse 15. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, it is your choice. Peter says, where can I go? Where can I go? When everybody else have left Jesus, when everybody else have decided to leave Jesus, Peter looks at Jesus and he asks him, you want me to go? Where else? Can I go? You have the word of life. You carry the word of life. You carry the word to sustain me. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the Father. You are the one who carries that word that will sustain me, that will help me to survive. That will help me to live. I cannot live without the word. I can have many things. For what shall it profit a man. If he gains the whole world. And loses his soul. You carry the word. That, replen that, that, that helps my heart. That you know. That refreshes my heart. That gives life to my soul. You carry the word. That refreshes my soul. Where can I go? Where can I go? I have made up my mind. I have made up my mind. Daniel said that. In Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. I have made up my mind. So you have. A, you have. You, 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 you are the one to choose. Man has the ability to decide. Daniel says. I have decided. I have made up my mind. I have made up my mind that nothing will defile me. Nothing will take away the spirit of God from me. Nothing will get me out of church. Nothing will get me out of salvation. Nothing will stop me from praying. I have made up my mind. You have the ability to decide. Man has the ability to decide. Lift up a hand and say, my father, my God, Today, this morning, as I pray, I make up my mind to follow you all the days of my life. 
So God cannot impose things on us. As a matter of fact, that's why we pray. Prayer is an invitation. In an invitation of God. An invitation to God. An invitation. It is man's invitation. Inviting God. Divine invitation. Prayer is asking God to come. Prayer is asking God, is giving God the permission. It is giving God the invitation to interfere with your life. That is prayer. Prayer is all that. Prayer is all about asking God, giving God the permission to interfere with your life, with your affairs. So unless you pray, God will remain in heaven. Powerful. It's powerful. He's a powerful God. He's able to change your life. But if you don't ask him to come and change your life, he will remain in heaven. It is until you say, God, arise. That is when he will come and scatter your enemies. So you will stay with your enemy and God will see you destroyed. God will see you being, uh, being attacked and invaded by the enemies of this world. But he will do nothing. God will do nothing. John Wesley said that God will do nothing except in response to the prayer of man. God will do nothing but in except in response to the prayer of man. So we are the ones who limit the power of God in our lives. The more you pray, the more the power of God is manifested and demonstrated in your life. The more you pray, the more heavens is involved in your life. The more you pray, like the church, the more dominion center prays, the more we see the activities of heaven here in our church. The more you pray for your family, the more you see the activities of God in your family. How many of you want to see God acting in your life? Moving in your life. The answer to that is your prayer. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my maker, help me to pray more. Give me the grace to pray. The more we pray, the more we see God in our lives. God will not impose himself to you. That's the point I'm making. God will not come by force. God is not a robber. God is not a burglar. He will not, he will not break in into your life. He will wait for you to call him. He will wait for you to call him. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my maker. Say, my father, my God. Please come into my life. The Bible says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So two people can be going through demonic harassment. God will save the person that will call unto his name. Hallelujah. Because at the mention of his name, every tongue must confess and every knee must kneel. I see witches. I see witches. I see sorcerers kneeling before you as you call the name of the Lord. I see demonic powers kneeling before you as you call the name of the Lord. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. A family that calls on God is the family that will be saved. A church that calls on God is the church that will be saved from demonic interference. This church will be saved if we pray. If we call on God. Lift up a hand and say, Father my God. Oh, we call upon you today on behalf of this church. Come appear. Come and appear for dominion center today in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I will pray. Say again, I will pray. So why do we need the church? Why do we need 
the church. We have the ability to make our own decisions. We have the capacity to make our own decisions about our actions. We can do what we wish, what we want, what we will. But many a times, that ability can also destroy us. Man can easily destroy himself with his own decisions and actions. Proverbs 19 verse 2 and 3. Man can easily destroy himself with that ability to make decisions for himself. I, I wish God was to make all the decisions for us because then the entire Kamulu will be here. Every dominator will be seated here. Had God taken uh, the ability to choose for ourselves, to decide for ourselves from us, if he took that decision from us, everybody will be here in church by now. Is that not true? Everybody will be here. If we were just robots, you wake up in the morning, you, uh, you go to work, and uh, you, you go to pray when you are supposed to fast you fast you know <laughs> when you are supposed to be in the house of God you are in the house of God when you are supposed to spend time in church you, are, you spend time in church for prayer and what have you you know I, I think we will be so blessed I, I think we will be having a wonderful wonderful human beings but God doesn't want you to be a machine he wants you to think for yourself he wants you to embrace him because you want, not because you are forced. So nobody will force you to love God. I, I think we must be we must be aware of that. Nobody will ever force you to love God and to follow God. If you're going to follow God, it's going to be your own decision. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If you're going to follow God, it's going to be your own decision. Somebody say, I make up my mind this morning. I will follow God all the days of my life. Praise the Lord. Let us follow God. Look at that scripture. Let's, let's read together. What does it say? It says also that give us from NLT. Let's read it from NLT. That the soul be without knowledge, blah, blah, blah. Now, NLT says, okay, let's read together. One to go. Enthusiasm without knowledge is not good. Ah, see that. See that. Charisma without understanding is not good. It is what made people to be shakaholat. Enthusiasm, charisma, zeal without understanding. That's why no matter how zealous we are, we have to go through some form of training in church. So that we can bring down your enthusiasm a little bit. Because a lot of it, my teacher told me, too much of anything is poisonous. Anytime man goes to the extreme, it becomes dangerous. Even extreme or too much religiosity, sometimes it can be dangerous. Hallelujah. The only thing that can never be dangerous for you is your relationship with God. If you take your relationship with God even too far, it can never harm you. It can never hurt you because God cannot harm you. God is not evil. God is not wicked. Praise the Lord. He says, haste makes mistake. I think Mswaili alitoa hapo aliposema, 
haraka haraka haina baraka eh alisema nini nyingine alisema mwenda pole hajikwai kwa hivyo ukikimbia utajikwa pole pole ndio mwendo kwa hivyo haraka haraka sio mwendo haraka haraka ni hatari <laughs> Verse three. Verse three says what? Let's read together. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness, and then are angry at God. Can you imagine that? We make our own foolish choices, and then when we are ruined by our own foolish choices, we begin to blame God. You don't come for prayer. The whole year you have not prayed. The whole month you have not prayed. The whole week you have not prayed. And then you start realizing that the devil is attacking you. Attacking your business. Attacking your brain. Attacking your heart. Attacking your body. And then you start wondering why. And I'm always in church. If you're always in church but you decide not to pray. God is not to be blamed. You are going to be ruined. You are going to destroy your own life. You are in church but you are not doing what you are supposed to do in church. You are not praying. How will you then be protected from those dangerous uh, entities in this world? How? You are in church and you are not serving. How then will you attract the blessing of God? Because the blessing of God is attracted through service. Divine health. According to Exodus 23 and verse 26. The Bible says, they shall serve the Lord. They shall serve the Lord. And then the Lord shall bless their cup and their water. I mean their bread and their water. Praise the Lord. And God cannot bless your water and your bread. He cannot release a blessing that is meant to bless your water and your bread when there is no bread. When there is no water. So for him to release a blessing that is meant to bless your food and your drinks, then the drinks and the food ought to be there. So he's, in other words, he's saying, that I have hidden, I have hidden your water and your blessing in your service. Come and serve me and you will see that I will bless your water and I will bless your bread. I will make sure that when I release my blessing, it gets, your, it gets something to, to come on. It gets the bread and the water in your life. From today, as you serve God, you will never go hungry. As you serve God, I declare you will not go hungry. And you must refuse to serve God and go hungry. You must refuse. Eli was very fat because he was serving God. Abraham was serving God and the Bible says he was rich. He became very rich in cattle, in silver, in gold in flock hallelujah we must become very rich in money in kenya shillings in us dollar we must become very rich in property in real estate we must become very rich with ideas we must become rich glory to god if we serve god so he says and he shall bless thy bread and the water and will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The other thing he says, verse 26, is that uh, he says that none of you will miscarry. None of you will cast your young ones. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren. You cannot be barren. You must be productive and fruitful if you are serving God. Lift up a hand and say, my father, my maker, I stand on your word today as I serve you. I refuse to be barren. I refuse to be unproductive. I will bear fruit. My life will bear fruit 
in the name of Jesus. Make that to a prayer one minute. Say I stand on your word. I stand on your word. Father I stand on your word as I serve you. I refuse to be barren. I cannot be barren. I cannot be unproductive. I cannot be barren. I refuse to be barren. My business cannot be barren. My ministry cannot be barren. My family cannot be barren because I serve God. I serve the living God. I refuse to be barren in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Clap your hands to Jesus. Sit down. So you cannot make a decision to come and serve God and then suffer. But there are people that have made a decision not to serve. So they have made a foolish decision and that foolish decision has ruined their lives and then they come to blame God. They come to blame the man of God. They come to blame the church. It is our church. I, I think I need to move to another church. This church is not helping me. Hallelujah. Somebody told me that when you go to serve God, don't go with an attitude of receiving. Go with an attitude of giving. Because it is the hand that gives that is more blessed. The hand that gives is more blessed. Praise the Lord. So if you are in church only to receive, hmm, you can only receive what you have already given. So if you always come to receive, always come to receive, at some point, are you not going to deplete the flow? Are you not going to deplete the flow? So when the flow is depleted, what will you do? What will you do then? So you must come to the house of God prepared and ready to give. Give yourself. Give your service to God. Come to bless the church. Come to bless God. That way, in turn, when you go back, you will have something to receive. The Bible says, and you shall design, you shall return and design or discover the difference between them that are righteous and them that are wicked, them that serve the Lord and them that serve him not. You shall see the difference. When you return, there will be a difference. I pray that you will return with good differences. I, I say, may you return with a good difference. I say, may you return with a good difference. In the name of Jesus, when you go, as you come back, you come with something new. You come with something new. With a new testimony. A new miracle. A new testimony. May that become your story. May that become your story. As you serve God, may God show himself in your life. Praise the Lord. So, role number one. We have said that the decision of man can easily destroy him. So we need the church. Why do we need the church? What is the role of the church? Number one, the church gives us a balance. So the first role of the church is to give us a balance. To provide a balance. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. To provide a balance. The church must strike a balance. The church must provide a form of checks and balances in our lives. The church must give us a form of uh, accountability. Must help us to be accountable. Must help us to be accountable. The church. The church should help us to be accountable. So the first reason you need the church and you need to be in the church is so that there can be 
a balance in your life so that the church can help you balance your life. The church will help you balance your life so that you are not so much inclined to the world and you, uh, you become insufficient when it comes to spirituality so that you don't become so secular, too much secular. So that, and also we, the church will not also will also encourage you not to become uh, uh, too much spirit or rather religious, not spiritual. You cannot be too much spiritual. That's a term I want to really avoid. You cannot become too much spiritual. I, I know what you mean when you say this person is too spiritual. You mean that everything he interprets everything spiritually, everything. Hata kuongea lazima aombe roho mtakatifu ruhusa ya kuongea. Kabla vae lazima aombe roho mtakatifu ruhusa ya kuvaa. Nitavaa nguo gani leo? I, I know that is what you call too much spiritual. Kabla aoe kabla aongee na mtu lazima ulize roho mtakatifu niongee na yeye. Umeniruhusu niongee na huyu dugu. Kuna watu kabla akusalimie lazima kwanza aombe ajitakase alafu akusalimie akisha kusalimia anaenda mahali kwa ukuta ana 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 anapiga some tongues raba kasha raba kasha raba kasha you know <laughs> ili ajitakase kwa sababu anaamini kuna watu hata kwa gari hawezi kusalimia mtu hawezi hata kushika kiti Hawezi kushika ule mlingoti unaitwa mlingoti ama chuma hawezi akashika ile chuma ya kujishikilia so najua unaongea kuhusu watu kaba hao mimi siongei kuhusu watu kaba hao mimi naongea kuhusu watu ambao wameingia kabisa katika ulimwengu wa roho na wamezama hao ni watu spiritual na uwezi ukasema they are too spiritual amen maybe unaweza kusema mtu ni too religious Hawezi kusalimiana na mtu ambaye si wa kanisa lake ama dini lake. Hawezi akashuhudiana na mtu ambaye si wa dini yake. Hiyo hata sio religiosity, hiyo ni ujinga, hiyo ni foolishness. Kwa sababu si binguni tutakuwa sisi wote. Si Dominion Center itakuwa binguni. Si Catholic itakuwa binguni kama watafika, wale watafika. Amen. Si PCA watakuwa binguni. Si Assemblies of God watakuwa binguni. Yes. Yes tashangaza sana ukipata mtu mwingine alikuwa ni muislamu lakini kabla aende kukufa ali, alikiri Yesu na akaingia utashangaza sana ukipata labda hizo za mwisho dakika za mwisho za Osama bin Laden kuwawa alimpokea Yesu na akaingia binguni after kuwa watu wote hawa watu wote ameu sasa wewe utafanya nini ukifika binguni wewe uwezi kukaribia wauaji wewe ambao uwezi ukakaribia watenda dhambi eh? na makahaba wanaokoka kila siku hmm. na kuna wengine haukuona akiokoka lakini kabla aokoke wakati alikuwa ananyongwa hmm? si kuna kahaba nilisikia wacha niache kutumia hiyo jina hiyo jina hata sio mzuri wote ni watoto wa Mungu si ni kweli hmm. so i'm not talking about that that is actually foolishness and we are not supposed to be foolish somebody say i'm not foolish I know who I am. I'm a child of God. Praise the Lord. So let's read together this scripture. What does it say? You are the salt of the earth. Hmm. Only that. You are what? This is Jesus speaking to you. Are you a disciple? He was talking to the disciples. And he told the disciples... You are the salt of the world. You are the one that will bring a balance. You are the one that will provide a balance in this world. Without the salt, the food will be tasteless. So when you enter into a, an environment, you bring taste. You bring taste. You bring taste. The other work of this of the of the of the of the of the salt is to preserve to do what? So salt brings number one, taste. Number two, 
preservation. So wherever you go, there will be preservation. Is it Laban who said that by divination, because he, he, was, a, he, was, he was a diviner, he was operating in, in the spirit of divination. Yes. So he was doing business with witchcraft. So he says, by divination, I understand that I am blessed because of you. I am blessed because of you, Joseph. That because of you, Jacob. It was Jacob. When Jacob went to Laban's business, the business was preserved. He found the business collapsing. But when he entered, the assault came. The balance came. The balance came. Hallelujah. And he was able to move the business of Laban from witchcraft to God. He took it to God. And he succeeded by the hand of God. He succeeded by revelation from God. One time God revealed to him what to do to increase produ production. And he told him, I want you to look for two sticks. And I want you to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to do what? Uh, to, to peel off. To peel off the skin of, the, of this uh, one stick. One stick, I want you to peel off some part of it. And the other one, I want you to peel off completely. So that it will be one color. And the other one will be spotted. And I want you to place those two sticks at the shore, at the banks of the, of the river. And when the sheep and the cows and the flock come to, you know, to drink water, they will be looking at the sticks. They will be looking at the sticks. Hallelujah. And when they look at the stick that is pure, that is, that has no spots, you know, it will, it will, con it will conceive, it will conceive after what it can see. After what it is seeing. The one that will that will, you know, look at the stick that is spotted, will give birth to, uh, you know, to a young one that is spotted. And that one will be yours. Because they had made a deal. Because this man, Laban, was a con man. He was not a good person. All his cows were one color. They were not spotted. So he knew if they are going to conceive and give birth, they are going to give birth according to their to their kind because that is what nature is all about you give kind or rather you give birth to your own kind the people who look like you are the ones that are going to follow you the people who think like you are the people that are going to be your friends amen <laughs> if you want to change your friends it is you to make a decision to change friends and go to the camp of people who don't look like you if you want to improve your life, then you have to go to people that are, are higher than you. People that are bigger than you. People who have succeeded more than you. But if you stay in default, in default mode, then you will only attract people of your size, people of your color, people of your kind, people of your caliber, people that you look like, you look the same people that talk like you, people who think like you, people who are failures like you, people that are mediocres like you, those are the only people that you are going to attract. If you are rich, of course, you will attract people that are rich like you, but if you want to become richer, you have to change camp and go to people that are richer than you. If you want to succeed more, you have to break your camp and go to people that can challenge you. People who can show you something different. People who can show you something that is different. People who can do business that is different from yours. People who can show you how to do, you know, bigger things, better things than you are doing. Because your eye, your eye is the, is the, is the window and the door the door to your to your soul what a man thinketh the Bible says 
he shall become. What you think is what you will become as a man thinketh. So is he. So if you have people that can challenge your thinking, people who can challenge you to think bigger, to think bigger, then you will begin to think like that. And the more you think like that, the more you will attract big things, the more you will become bigger. Amen. May the Lord help you. Oh, I say may the Lord help you. Oh, I say in the name of Jesus, may the Lord help you.